So thank you for coming to Facebook Tips and Tricks, the Facebook course for the advanced user or for anybody who has a Facebook page and just wants to know what to do next. So I'm Cheryl Rosen. I'm a member of the Hudson Rotary Club um, or the Shrewsbury Rotary Club, the Worcester Sunrise Sunset Club, the Acton Boxborough Club, Northboro Club, if anyone's been a member for the last 20 years, um, anywhere in the district club. But I love Rotary um, and I love social media. So I am going to be available anytime over the next 20 years in Rotary if you want to ask me any questions about social media. <laughs> My information's on the back of these sheets. I also have some business cards up here. And you can contact me at any time. Telephone, I still love. Anybody in this room who knows me, I will call you. Don't, Carol, don't I usually pick up the phone and call you before yes, I do anything else? I three minute warning. I'm almost I know, I know. And how many times have you talked to me while you've been sitting in your garage for an hour and the lights have been out and it's getting cold? So feel free to use any right. form to reach me. No, I'm telling the truth. So um, what I'm going to do is, First of all, these sheets are everything I'm going to talk about. We won't have time to cover everything, but I wanted to provide you a little bit of all these things so you have them whether we really have time tonight to talk about them or not in 20 minutes. And I was trying to think of the things that you may need for doing Facebook for Rotary on that next level up. So the first thing I want to show you is something that Facebook just came out with within the last 30 days. This is a brand new site and it is called Facebook for Nonprofits. And so it's that very first thing that you see on number one on here. And so the, and the website is listed on here for you. So what this site is doing, as you'll see, it talks about raising money for your organization, how to get supporters for it, raising awareness for your organization. I'm not going to go into lots and lots of stuff about each of these things because we are short on time. And you can very easily just flip through. You can start here. You'll also see it, it, it's a beautiful site. And it's very, very easy. It's similar to the way Rotary International's site was set up. So you can go all the way down here, create your page. So if you already don't have one, you can literally just go on there. And this is where you would start it, as you all know, because you already have sites. I'm assuming if you're in here, you already have a page. So if you don't, you literally could get started there. And it does. So does that, if you have a, um, if your club has a Facebook page already, you would attach it to that? Yeah, because then you can go here and you can click on raise awareness uh -huh. and it'll go ready for the next step, activate supporters, and it will start talking about it. It'll explain how to do this, how you can, um, so that's the next one. I remember I was doing this at home. It's so new. I haven't had a long time to actually go through all of these. Um, let's see, learn more. Ask people to speak out. So it goes in and it discusses how to do things, like define actions to take. It tells you how to share a post, photo, video, change their profile photo, sign a pledge, tag email or sign a letter of encouragement, buy a t-shirt, piece of swag. They craft your call to action, asking the right people, defining the problem, offer specific action. And then it will show you samples of what you can set up. Show a clear need. Inspire people to share their stories. There's more examples. And it will do this for every one of the categories is the raise funds. I know it, it's said in here that they're still working on some of these, so not every um, section is 100% there. I think it's a little bit slow on internet here. As you can see, some of the photos are starting to come in. And I apologize, I have not had enough time to go through all of it. Sure. Do we need to recreate our page, or do we turn ours into a non-profit? No, what it's doing is it's, it's giving you um, 
the information that you need to take your existing page and what you can do with your existing page. Because we if you saw on that, no, on, excuse me? We don't change our page. No, because if you saw on that very, right, because if you saw on that very first one I clicked and it says you can get started, it brought you right to that very first page of where you would click to start a page. And it's the same thing, if you already have a page, you already would have gone through that very first step. This is just telling you once you have your page started, these are the things that you can do to make that page better as a nonprofit. And there's a lot of things on here. Do you know, like way back when we would have done this, they actually had a category nonprofit? Was that always there or is this a new one? I don't. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, are things designated? I don't, like that? well, I don't think it was actually a designation. They're still looking at it as a business organization type of section. Because there's two different types of sections. If you go back here, when you go to that very first page, you look at it, and it's actually, I think it was, I don't know if I specified it in here, but if you go to the very yeah, if you go to create your page, there's two different types of categories on businesses. So if you have a local business or place or a company organization or institution, so that's the one that you would click because you're an organization. And so if you were to go there, you create your category, and then you would go down and community organization or, should I see if it's a nonprofit? Um, nonprofit organization. Oops, wrong one. And from there, you would put your Rotary Club of, and you would just type it in from that spot on. So I, the one you have already have, this would be an addition to? No, no, you're, no, you're, so these, the, there, this, this, all right, what it is, all right, okay, all right, what it is, is this, this page is, now this, what this is, is this is a page to help nonprofit organizations be able to take, if they already have a page, give them ideas and tips to make their organization, their nonprofit organization's page work to the best that it can. And if you don't already have a page set up at all, it takes you to step one. So basically, if you're already at step two, three, or four, it helps you, it, it tells you what to do if you already are at step two, three, and four. But if you haven't taken step one yet, this is step one. But if you already have a page, you're already at steps two, three, and four. So Cheryl, can you have two pages? You can set up multiple pages, um, so not under the exact separate. same name, though. Yes. So you can't have two pages that say the Rotary Club of such and such. They have to be different names. And Sorry, it would I, dilute everything, wouldn't it, so you have less likes? No, 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 it's not what I was asking. Now, if you, if, you, if you had, like, like with our Hudson Club, we could have a page that's, well, we have event pages. That's not really a good idea. Like myself, I have um, my business page, and then I have a page that's set up for a client, so I can go in and I can set up multiple pages for multiple clients. The, the, reason, I, the, the reason I ask that question is you could do something specific, like if you were trying to attract young people, But what what name would you want to? Uh, I mean, it's probably too complicated. Okay. Could you uh, have like a separate page for your event, like if you create an event? You right, right, and and, and right, and uh, and we can bounce around. One of the things that you can do from your regular page would be, for example, let me pull up. This is my business page, but I'm going to show you um, the Sturbridge page because that's probably a better page to find Sturbridge on here. Where I put it? I be doing this with the glasses on. So this is the Sturbridge Rotary Club page, which I created for them. So in here, 
you can go see where it says more. You can go under more and click it and it says events. And then you click create event. Now if you go on to here, there's a section on page two, number five, and it gives you instructions, which is pretty much what it tells you on here. So what you do is you go from the home page, which is what I showed you, you go to the more tab, go to events, you click create event. And I, I, as I put in here, make sure you add an event photo that will excite and draw in your audience. So don't just put in something boring because when people go searching on Facebook for your event, they're going to see the picture of that event right up there in that box. If it's something stupid and boring, they, they may not even be interested in taking that next step. They see something exciting. If it's a, uh, something that you have done in past years, take a photograph from a previous year that looks really great. If it's people doing something, they need to look engaged, having fun. If it's something that hasn't been done before, but you can find a photograph that just makes a lot of sense, but it has to be a really great photograph, colorful or whatever, put that in there. And then uh, if another Rotary Club is co-hosting it, you can add that club in there. Um, see where it says here under co-hosts? So you can add that club in there too. And that's great because then you've got the cross going back and forth and more exposure going in there. You can um, use a link from a website that will be accepting payments. Um, as it was mentioned before with our Hudson Club, we use Eventbrite. That's one of the most common places that you can use. So you set up an Eventbrite um, account and you put that right in here and that's where the money will go back and forth. That would go right here under the, uh, the website, under here, ticket URL. That's where Eventbrite would go. Uh, get very detailed with the description. I've seen people put events out and then under the description they forget to put in some of the information about the location. They don't put down what the attire should be, whether children are invited to this thing. You know, then next thing you know, you're getting phone calls, you're getting postings put on there. Not that postings are bad, but the event will work so much better for you if you put all the specifics that the people will need in advance right into that description uh, section right in here. Uh, under the category, you know, click select category. What type of event is it? Are you doing it as a fundraising event? Uh, are you doing it for something in the community? Is it purely entertainment? You know, just go through these things. Food and drink. Uh, well, you know, you've got the Shrewsbury Club's got their wine, was that wine tasting wine thing? Is, right. So, you know, you can go through those and you don't want to say, oh, we're doing a fundraiser. No, the people aren't coming because it's a fundraiser. Yeah, the club's doing it as a fundraiser, but people looking at an event are looking at it for what the event is. So if it's a wine tasting night, it's a food and drink night. That's how you want to promote it. Think of your audience at all times, not what you're going to get out of it, but what your audience is going to get out of it. There's a section on here where'd it go? Um, for tags. Where did tags go? Oh, um, ah, can't find them on here now. Where did we go? Um, they were on here when I was looking for them before. Um, why are they not on here now? My eyes, do you see a no, thing on there for tags? I pulled it up, oh wait a minute, that's why. No? They were on here when I was looking before. There's usually a section on here. Well, you should see a section that says tags. When you see that section, for some reason it's not popping up right now, but there's usually a section on there that says tags and you can add tags. Tags are one to two word descriptions that people will search for. So if somebody is looking for wine tasting events on Facebook, use a tag of wine tasting. Uh, if they're looking for, I don't know, a, a 
a horseshoe event. You put in horseshoes because you're doing a, you know, a horseshoe outdoor event over the summer. Whatever it is, something that could bring someone in. If the, an, if the outside person is looking for something in that particular category, that's what you're going to put in as your tags. Um, and there's also a thing for scheduling. And again, something in here is getting, oh, here, here, schedule. You don't need to, the moment you're finished with this, you may not be ready to post it. You may not have all your information ready. You might want to check with your board members or something else. So you can go in and schedule it to get posted as, at another time, or you can save it as a draft. And obviously, you all know what those are. And so that's pretty much what those are. So does that answer everybody's questions on creating events on here? Yeah. And will that be viewed as another page, or is just a list you have to go to events and find it? I'm sorry. Will this be a separate page? It, it will actually look like it. People can search it as a separate page mm -hmm. on Facebook and on here. Once it's created, it would actually show up. See this on here on the actual page. If I go back to the timeline, one of the things you can do, which I'm not going to do for them, but this tab here called Manage Tabs. You can go on here and it says drag to reorder. You can actually take the events and you can come over here and you can slide it and you can bring it up and you can move it around. And if you do that, say you want to you know, move it over here and then you hit save and it will make sure it stays up here. And that way, because you have an event there, people will click to see what the events are. The other thing is, is once you have it, it will take it, let me cancel it. So what will happen is in here, instead of saying reviews, you might have timeline, about, photos, and then events. So you can rearrange what's going on. Right now, they don't have any open events, so they don't have events listed at, the, at this point. But that allows you to move them over so you can get them in. The other key thing is, is periodically, you want to uh, put your event in your timeline. So you'll go in there and just keep reminding people take the photo of it, put a brief description in about it, and you'll see in here when I talk about photos, or we can jump right into photos, when I talk about posting photos, you want to make sure that you put as few, is it the photos or is it the, I actually posting content, where I talk about you want to put in a visual with between 150 to 200 characters. So you're going to want to post that periodically, depending on how far away your event is. If it's you know, a couple months off, you might want to say once a week, post a photo about the event, put in 150 to 200 characters, reminding people about it, and don't necessarily put that same photo in every time because I've seen too many people, they do that, and people think, oh, it's the same ad, I'm not even going to look, and they get bored with it. So if you can do something different every single time, you may recycle them every once in a while, but it'll keep bringing people back in so they're going to want to keep looking at it over and over and over again. Okay. All right. So as people are looking at this sheet, instead of me just going through it, are there specific things people want me to talk about, or should I just go through this list and talk a little bit more about posting content since it's the next one on the list? We, okay, because they're giving us only like another Three minutes. <laughs> I mean, it's like that's why I said that's why I gave you all of this to um, can't really do all this in 20 minutes. So um, that's why I wrote it all out for you. Um, I I know. So you're saying what? So what was the question? Inviting? What were you saying? Inviting friends? Cross marketing. Well, the biggest thing about cross marketing, and it was it was kind of touched upon a little bit at the the uh, uh, first uh, talk, is it's important that everything you do has everything in it. 
So if you post something on um, your Facebook page, you, well, what I do a lot of time, on my personal Facebook page, I have it connected with my Twitter. And I don't do kittens and puppies and babies and stuff on there. I, on my personal page, I post rotary. For things that go out to the public, I post rotary event, uh, rotary international, rotary club, rotary district things. If it's more personal, I will change who the audience is for it to just go to my friends. Anything that goes to public, I have it automatically set up to go to Twitter. So that way, my Twitter feed is getting this cross going back and forth. If you remember on all your brochures for your club, or if it's a business you're looking to do this on, your brochures, your business cards, all your marketing things, if you can start including every piece of your social media along with all your printed pieces, think of it all as one piece of marketing. Don't think of, this is email, this is a website, this is Facebook, this is my brochure, this is my business card. It's all one piece. And as soon as you start thinking of it that way, just put everything together all at once. And sometimes it's hard to do all that and you can't put everything together. Well, sometimes you can't put everything on there, but there are ways to incorporate some things and a lot of times just the little logo say check us out on and if your name is what it is you know if it's say like let's say Hudson Rotary Club and if everything is Hudson Rotary Club and it's Twitter is Hudson Rotary Club and Facebook is Hudson Rotary Club and uh, LinkedIn is Hudson Rotary Club website is Hudson Rotary Club and you just say check us out on and you list all those little icons then you don't have to put your name on every single one of them. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. And besides, people will remember or, or make it a lot easier to find you if they have one name to look for you with. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. All right, so that's why I put all this stuff in writing for you. Now, one thing I want you to write down, write this website because this is not on there. This is new that just came out. I know this is long to write, but this will save you a lot of problems. It's called 12skip.com. You'll see it, can you see it across the top? Yep, no, no spell out 12skip.com. Can you see it across the very top of the page there? I don't know if you guys can all see it. I, I'll make sure, there, um, Laura's gonna, look. yeah. Yeah, Laura said, I guess Laura's going to update all this stuff after, and I'm going to have her add it. But it's 12skip.com slash tutorials slash Facebook. Slash 1291. Oh, don't put your pens down yet. This is a long one. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yep. On your Facebook, could you, you maybe post this document? This, this is this is actually um, it's on the 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 dis well the district has a thing on it and Laura's going to make sure that it goes out into a wider spread so everyone will have it. So after 1291 slash, go Facebook new cover template with a hyphen between each word. So Facebook face Facebook new cover size template with a hyphen between them. I, Facebook, it, we're, 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 we're going to post it, but uh, all right, let me show you real quickly because I know we have to end this. It's Facebook hyphen, new hyphen, cover hyphen, size hyphen template. The only reason why I'm giving you this is this is a new site that Facebook has posted. It's called New Facebook Cover Photo Size Plus Template 2016. It was, po it was just posted on February 4th and it gives you, you know, your main photo that goes across the top of your Facebook page. It's still going to be. Well, here's. So well, here's. Is all of these are going to be put on the website and in the district newsletter and on the home page of the website once Laura accumulates all of these presentations. We'll have a nice presentation with an image from the social media summit and uh, seminar and then uh, the links to all of these PDFs over there. Okay. All right. Okay. I I just want to add, there's many other websites. There's uh, one I use, 
on canva.com uh, and it automatically sends to your Facebook, your Twitter, your web, what, not Twitter, but um, Facebook and other social Social media. Well, what, so there are, yeah. uh, it's what I was going to explain on this one is what people don't realize, and this is why I was showing this. You see this little picture down here? When you put your photo on there, you know how it's this dimension? And then when you look at it on a phone or you look on it on something else, that this is chopped off and this is chopped off, and you wonder, gee, I created it the size they told me to create it. Why is it now chopped off here and chopped off there? The reason why is because different things that you have are different dimensions. So they've actually set up that you can click on here and it gives you the templates. And here you can uh, click on for the templates. And when you click on here, it gives you the templates for the different things. And maybe that site does the same thing. I don't know. They just released this one. I, I didn't know that one, but thank you. So Canva, you said? Canva.com? Yeah, yeah. I'll check that one out. C-A-N-V-A. So I'll, um, I'll look that one up and we can maybe add that one. But I don't know how many of you really realize that when you go and post a photo on there when you're creating it and you think, okay, I did what they told me to do and then you go look at it afterwards and it's like, it cut it off or it doesn't look right on here and it's because, yeah, they give you one size but it, it's not one size fits all. <laughs>